I said, I'm going to do like a like a, a search on Google how much Seb and Spencer are worth from yeah, hashtag. No, no so, anyway, so anyway, so anyway, so anyway, it's funny. I love it. Say, say, oh, this is so we all, we're, like, no, it's not. It's golden. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Ben Foster. Welcome to my brand new podcast, The Fozcast. And starting things off today, we are kicking off in style. We have got absolute YouTube royalty. We've got Spencer, we've got Sebastian, hashtag fame. Now, before we actually get into it and get started, I just need to let you know that we have played golf this morning, yeah? We have had a nice little 18 holes of golf, hence the reason why me and Tom, rhino legs, are bright red in the face. We definitely got sunburned. <laughs> However, we need to show you this golf shot. Spencer has played the shot of your life. Hello. 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 Come on. By the way. Come on. <laughs> Shut up. How have I got that on camera as well, by the way? I haven't seen anything like it. And I haven't played in about a year, so we take it. We take it. <laughs> Probably. Come to me, yeah, mate. Come to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Career. Good foot <laughs> by a significant past. margin, the it's best shot he's ever It's my first golf co uh, game in what, it was 10 months. Yeah, yeah. First, you know, I'll probably play one or tw two more times this year. That's it. I What's even more often. mental about it, is I'm sure you're going to show the clip in a minute, is that we literally, to that point, hadn't had filmed any no. shots of anyone. No. I randomly just whipped my phone out. I mean, just as a camera man, come, come over the camera man. Spencer, we'd had some indifferent shots, <laughs> and then the, and then the camera comes out, and he's absolutely rattled one in. Unbelievable shot. So for me, like it was beautiful. The, we had the crowd behind us. Nobody gave a toss. Nobody <laughs> no, did you anything. Turned, turned around, and gave him a wave. I, I was fuming. I was the only one that gave him a hug. It was brilliant shot, though, mate. Um, well done, well done, Daniel. Let's move on, okay? Right. Yeah. Hashtag. But also talk about who won the golf day as well. Who was it? Okay. Well, I mean, it's obvious now. Isn't it? <laughs> I, I think I made some money actually. That's uh, not a bad shout. Yeah, 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 let's not forget about that. I put it on Twitter. How much did we have, have on it, by the way? Pardon? How much did we have? Oh yeah, well, with the tenors hours. Oh, isn't it? Ten yeah, I it was yeah. Got to pay him. <laughs> Thing is, I'm, yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy to be 50. fair because he's never ever wants to play golf. But now I'm thinking, if we let him win, he might want to play. I bought a few earlier as well. To be fair, yeah, we'll call it even. We'll call it even. All right, we're cool. We're cool. All right, let's get into it. Hashtag. Wait there, wait there. Before we start into hashtag, we've got the opening question, haven't we? Uh, for the podcast it. come on hit it hit it right top three people dead or alive Saturday night your neck of the words Dan Essex <laughs> Dan, Dan, Dan Essex way who are you going <laughs> oh, Dan on the Lash Hut Dan right. Jagger right. yeah top three what's your one what lounge is it something Wait, lounge on the Lash Rift specifically like... night out Saturday night we're not talking okay. dinner and wow. Nelson Mandela's we're talking Saturday night out top three people Crikey. dead or alive you're having it because we think there'll be good value on the night. Oh out. yeah, not oh, yeah. if I can bring someone back from the dead. I don't really care if they're gonna have good crack. Or no, not. you're having a, you're having a night out okay. like on the tiles type thing. So that you got they've got to be good value. It's a hard question. This. It is. It is, it is. This, is this is what I'm saying. This is where I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> oh my fucking I don't know God, where, to, where to go. Well, with this this yeah. How, what sort of night so. you want to have? A, a wild night out. It's a so, night out. It's, it's a, a night out. out. I reckon you want to get. You reckon you got someone in there that is gonna. No matter what kicks off, you know you say, I'm going to go number one, The Rock is coming. Oh, that's right. a nice shout, that is. Good value. Yeah. Yeah. Rock, I used to be a massive the, the Rock fan. I was just thinking of a cannon, like an absolute weapon on a night out. Do you know those guys who oh, will just go and get larruped and they are a problem. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it's going to be a good night just because of that. Well, I've got but you've, got, got, you've got safety. I just want a big lad, so I can be that guy <laughs> and no one's going to get near me because The Rock's going to just lay the yeah. smack down anyone that comes near me. <laughs> the thing is, I don't want to necessarily endorse this person's behaviour. In, in a current day and age, obviously, it's a sad story, obviously. But you, if it was like the mid 90s, you'd, I'd want to go out of Gaza in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Shout. But now, I'm like, obviously, it's quite no, sad. No, no, this, this, right? this is the caveat. So yeah. there's no, no one's got any problems in the world. You know, we're not being insensitive or anything like that. But take all of that Pure out of the equation because yeah, yeah, Gaza's yeah. on my list. Well, Gaza would have to be there then. Yeah, because like, look at some of the clips from like Italia 90 and stuff, and you just think like, that, that, that doesn't happen anymore. We were literally like, so we, we asked this question yesterday because like we, I've been on Jack's podcast, and the question he asked, which is I think is an absolute belter, is the meal deal question, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. it's what sort of your meal deal would be. But then we came up with a question of who you'd want to go out in the last with, and straight away somebody mentioned Gaza. And we did, like we said, we were a little bit nervous about yeah. going, we don't want to go crazy because of blah, blah. One absolute belter that Frank, our editor, who's next to us here, he came up with, which yeah. is absolutely incredible, Russell Brand. Yeah, Brand. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah, and he's also from Essex as well, so he'd know the, the land from Grays. Yeah. Russell Brand uh, would be absolutely yeah. belting, wouldn't he? Would be good. Yeah. Back in the day, Russell Brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back in the day, Russell Brand. But I do like the fact that Seb 
went for safety. Yeah, <laughs> he's gone for safety. Everybody's going to look after rough him. Nights. He needs some protection. Right. Is anyone, anyone else you're throwing in the mix then? <laughs> I mean, Paolo Di Canio. Oh, yeah. I don't know, if he, I don't know what he's yeah. like on a night out, but as West Ham fans, he's, he's got to be. He's got to be I don't know whether like Michael Jackson would be interesting because... You know that what, he's gonna he's gonna be I, no I think yeah. it'd be I think it'd be like I, I mean whatever you think about him as an individual uh, for me like his music is incredible I'll always yeah. love it but like on the dance floor it'd be unbelievable to like watch him do that live <laughs> he'll be nicking birds no. right no, left no, that, that, but would he that's the question but would he but would he it's a difficult one I know yeah, we'll leave so Seb okay. you're a MJ and the Rock <laughs> we're not coming on a night out with you alright spend so this is what I said yeah, about yeah, this yeah, question yeah, it's right, a really yeah. tough you one you were killing me I was going really I, there was one. loads of things I wanted to do what was the question I wanted to do it was oh, it was brutal it was no favourite movie I was going to ask favourite movie favourite TV programme of mm. all time yeah and these were like what if they say something like gladiator and you've got to go oh yeah deep like, <laughs> yeah. like where do you go from there kind of thing Seb hasn't taken into consideration chemistry at the table that's true they've exactly, got the rock yeah. opposite Michael Jackson what have they got in common I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to work I don't think yeah. the I'd like to see it. Michael's people's elbow to be fair <laughs> yeah, I'm going like Ricky Gervais, Gervais Gaza yeah. and like a Russell Brand or something like yeah, that yeah, or you good. know Gaza's even just Gaza and Jimmy Five Bellies I'm, yeah. I'm not a massive fan of his films now but growing up I was a big Adam Sandler fan yeah, yeah, yeah me too. I think it would be quite good value like yeah me prime. too um, but yeah, it's, it's a tough one because there's a lot of people I love, like and admire, but not necessarily because what they're like on a night out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I actually just like to go out with my mates. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a better night than going out with my mates? No, what are we talking about as well? Are we talking like you say Sugar Hurt? Or is it Sugar Hurt, yeah? Oh, yeah, I mean, no I mean, one actually. It's closed now anyway. I think it's closed. What, yeah, what, it's, what, what's it like? So, them, well, this is what I'm talking about, like, that ilk. You can either go to them or you can go to the pub. And okay, have a nice yeah, every time. Okay, Boozer, that's exactly yeah. the Boozer, same. Boozer, innit? Definitely. Murphy's for us, innit? Lemington. Boozer's, yeah. get me like a nice little plot up with, with a little chair against a like, bar or something yeah. like that. That'll do me all exactly. day long. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. enough of the small. Any, what was the movie? What was the favourite movie anyway? Ooh, so many. Sad, yeah. <laughs> Dad, you I quite know, to be fair, I, I, my favourite film is Good Will Hunting. Have you seen Good Will Hunting? Oh, yeah, I amazing. Love, I love amazing. Robin Williams in yeah, general. Yeah, Actually, yeah. he would have been banned on He would have been banned Obviously, also had an alcohol problem as well, which is very sad, but... I mean, that tends, people that, that are good for night out we ain't taking it tend to, to be yeah. go that way. But yeah, uh, Robin Williams, I love him, so I like all his films. But I think yeah, he's brilliant. Hunting, yeah. Feber, no? Yeah, I, I actually, the one film that I, is, I don't like seeing things many times. I like watching it, I want to see something else now. Yeah. But yeah. the one film I'll always watch that comes on is Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, I think it's a great film. Proper so deep. Classic, oh, yeah. that's why I didn't answer this question. I like then. war. <laughs> <laughs> you like war and like death. What's, like your what's your film? Uh, mine's a comedy. I'll just be a comedy. So like these, are, these were like you can't have a comedy as your favorite film. Like, I would have the comedy as my Fair. favorite film. So Adam, any Adam Sandler yeah, film, yeah. I will watch for sure. Um, like even Dumb and Dumber. I love Dumb and Dumber. It's like a stupid film, but it makes me Happy feel. Happy Gilmore's. Yeah. Right up yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed today you but there was a couple of little quotes on the yeah, golf yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Rush hour, anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. anything like that. Right, come on then, let's actually get into the pod now. We've just chatted gump for about 15, 20 minutes. Well done, guys. We're on flames. Hashtag, let's talk about the very beginnings, okay? Because I remember speaking to you a few weeks ago. Well, it was a few months ago, I think, actually. We had a nice little um, like Zoom call, me and Tom, with you guys. It was brilliant. You were talking through all sorts of bits and bobs. And Cesar, as Piliqueta's name, cropped up early doors. And he was like one of the main guys to start with. Early investor, all that kind of stuff. How did that come about to start with? Yeah. To and be fair, actually... we, we were a couple of years in before Cesar got involved. But um, he was, yeah, you're right. In terms of, because everyone, everyone else at the club is just, it's like me, Seb and Alex, my missus, in terms of who like owns the club. That's so it. That's the only other guys that run it sort of yeah, day he, to day. He's yeah. the only person, that, apart from those three, that is like External, a part of the yeah. board, if you like. So that was kind of the first outside person we brought in. Um that came about because... So, so what, what did he do? Just inv He invested, yeah? Yeah, he put some money into the club. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, that came about because he, he was involved in FIFA Esports, which is you know, another part of our... Yeah, We've got the okay, football yeah, and the yeah, FIFA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I present a lot of those events. And so we met at a uh, uh, FIFA World Cup, uh, E-World Cup, in, I think it was 2017. Yeah. And he, a lot of footballers were getting into esports. Like Ozil's got a FIFA team. Yeah. Rude Hullet's got one. Gareth Bale's got Beckham. one. There's Beckham's a Dutch got player. One now. There's a Dutch player who's got loads of money in. Apparently, I can't think of his name, but he invested heavily into mm. some team. One of the big boys as well. Oh, really? I think it was the you know the phase. Phase yeah, kind of something. Oh, right, I okay, think yeah. he was original, one of the original investors in that, which fair dues, it looks to have paid right. off at least. Uh. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of footballers getting involved in it, and I yeah. think as P was was interested in it, but he knew about us, and, and I've met him, and he just came to me and said. Could I get involved in hashtag? And I was like, yeah, please cool do. guy, yeah, great guy, great lovely guy. guy. We love brilliant, to hear that. yeah, brilliant partner. And um, obviously, we're big fans of his as well. He's come and got involved in different things over the years as well, and helps the club yeah. in lots of ways. Yeah, just fantastic guy.
anything you could ever dream of in someone that will back your project he just lets us crack on with it like tell me about the the celebration that he's promised he's going to do yeah. Yeah, this is world class we obviously like you know we we do it less now to be fair but when we first started we were yeah, hashtagging yeah. it weren't we and we said like can we get you to do one he's probably scored like maybe three goals since then but he's, he's not he's not going to be prolific so guys <laughs> that that is the uh, the celebration okay it's obviously a hashtag yeah but it's a lovely it's celebration it's good to know some people go with the other hand out and I, I, I think right hand over left hand. Yeah, right hand over left. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, my goalie gloves, mate. I ain't yeah. gonna see it. Ain't <laughs> gonna see it all right? I think it would be clear. Imagine on match of the day, you're watching match of the day, and Cesar screams into the camera or something like that. And the best thing, there's a couple of celebrations people do. It's very similar. It's like the one. Yeah. Or a. It, a lot, some people do like this A, and it, yeah. like a lot of yeah, people, a lot of people message us, go, oh, they just hashtag it. We're like, we'll take it. My favorite, <laughs> yeah, yeah. favorite um, celebration ever, Nicholas and Alka was that. Yeah, we used to do that. We used to do that. safeguard, didn't we? Well, didn't have some sort of weird political. No, no, no. He did. He, did, he scored it was, it was at West Brom it was when he was at West Brom he scored against West Ham we were away at West Ham he scored and he did I can't remember it was like a one finger or something, oh, something oh, right. he did summer and it had some mad political he got yeah. banned for a game or two yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that, that. Um, we've had a few people hashtag, David Myler did one for us he hashtagged yep. it when he scored a goal did he yeah um, there's been quite there's been a few boys uh, and, and then one of our old esports players Harry's one of his best mates is a uh, rugby union player mm. for England he did it when he scored a try Oliver Gildart Oliver Gildart yeah we've got a few we've got a few out there mm. a few tags out there yeah, exactly. There's a few tags out there. And about. congrats, promoted again. Yes, yes. Diff- bit of a weird promotion because it's like a points per game promotion. But we've got a trophy. You take them, made one up. You take them. It doesn't matter. Yeah. In fairness, you were killing it anyway. Like you, you I think you'd played. It the was heartbreaking because we, we, we sort of we were odds on to win the league when the pandemic hit. We would just beaten our main title rivals yeah, yeah. to go like ahead, and then obviously it happened. We didn't know what was going to happen. The FA called the league re- really early. They made the decision to call it off really early before any professional team had made any decision about points per game, null and void, anything. They just said, no, all gone, cancelled. Yeah, so you lot, when you were playing, you and the Prem at uh, that point, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, March 14th or something was the last game we played for the first COVID break and they called, they cancelled the league on March 20th. Yeah, Premier that was League didn't make their mind yeah. up Six until days, July. but not only did they call yeah, it off, they yeah. used the word expunge, which basically means Deleted, yeah. every Just goal forgotten. never happened. Absolutely forgot. Yeah, awful. So they did that and then obviously we resu- resumed and they had no way of like continuing the previous season. They just started again and we were again on we, track to win it We played 74% again. of our season when they did that. Yeah. And they said there was no precedent for points per game and then all the other leagues, apart from the Prem, which finished obviously, uh, like to use the playoffs, the lower league, league one, league two, whatever, they all used points per game. Every league. And across the co- like many countries as well, not just England. But they obviously... It felt like the entire time it was going to just be a real one that we had to just swallow. And then there was a big campaign called uh, the Non-League Project, yeah, was called, wasn't it? Yeah. which is basically around saying, look, there is an opportunity because they wanted to do a restructure of the league's pyramid. That it, it just happens to be there is a mathematical way that you could promote the amount of teams that were there. One team from each league, no relegation. Yeah. And that then gives you an even pyramid. And we were like, that's too good to be true. They're never going to do that. And they did. <laughs> and they did. Bam, so fair play. Thank you very fair much. Play. I remember that like at the time, though, because... I think we had a game against Leicester when it initially got suspended. I think it was about the middle of March, wasn't it? Yeah, we were yeah, due yeah. to play Leicester, I think, on the Saturday. And I came down with it ill on the Wednesday. Oh, really? And I think I was literally one of the first ones to come down with it initially. You remember Mikel Arteta came down with yeah, it? Yeah, that really was early. That was early. And there was another player. There was an outfield player as well. Um, yeah, came down, but really early doors. But I was panicking, thinking, brilliant, I'm going to be like the first one to get it. All the lads at football were texting me like, have you got it? Have you got the corona? And I'm like, what? what? Like, because at the time, though, nobody yeah. knew sort of the extent no, yeah. of anything, did they, kind of thing. And I, I was thinking, please don't be the first guy because you're going to be all over the news. But then thankfully we had Arteta came out and then another player. And it was then it was just like a house of cards. Yeah. Everybody was coming out with all sorts of kind of... Yeah, yeah, mad. But it for was them mad to... to watch on Sky Sports, though, wasn't it? Because it, it was, was like, it was just at the start, brilliant. it was like, wow. And then, and then it was like Arteta, oh, and then you yeah. had like yeah. Tom Hanks and people like that. But it was like they, did, they still did Cheltenham Festival. Like that, was, that, was that, that was that week. That was later that week, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Me and him made a video like a week before us saying, we think Euro, the Euros are going to get cancelled. And we got in the comments just mugged off, going like, we're just trying to clickbait. Yeah, yeah. No, I really don't think the Euros are going to happen, guys. We had a discussion about it, and obviously they didn't. That Cheltenham, I think that Cheltenham thing was the super spreader. Yeah, if you think there's like what oh. literally hundreds of thousands of people the thing is right it's interesting right, if you yeah. think about how a festival works like Cheltenham and you think about how something like a football match works at a football match you come to a particular place in the stadium yeah. you leave from a particular place so yeah. not great but at a festival you go woohoo yeah. woohoo touch all the doors all the toilets yeah. all the areas I'm not sure about everything. you though Seb I, I don't agree with that I just walk into the Guinness tent <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and that's me for six hours well, <laughs> that'll do it's fair, fair. We, <laughs> yeah Going forward with hashtag, okay, what's, where, where, where are we looking? What are we thinking? What's the goal? 
because yeah. from where you've come from already to be where you are already now is that's like it's some achievement it's outrageous yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well speaking of the future I've actually got something for you come Consi on consider it a down payment for when you obviously do sign the contract with hashtag in the future uh, there is your your shirt for hashtag united mate do guys it. have a look at this it's actually an outfield shirt but you know I'm, I'm sure you'd be fine with that what size is this XL yeah that, I mean that's what we had left <laughs> <laughs> well, come on let's see if it fits come on so you got some big, you got some big. So there's, there's rumours rife, Bayo Akinfemwa, Fozzie. Yeah, yeah, the names yeah. being rolled out now. Fair yeah, Bayo has actually said it. Like, well, we obviously me and him have chatted for years about it. He actually managed our first game, like our first ever game. Did he? So he's been around since the beginning. This is definitely going on. Solid. Yes, love it. Get it on. But yeah, uh, Bayo actually confirmed it public. We did a, one of his podcasts yeah. a, month, a few months ago, and he said he will play for hashtag one day. And we. We've been talking about when the right time to do that is. Obviously, still with Wickham at the minute, and I've always said to him, you know, I'm like, large, unless you yeah, think you're large, <laughs> <laughs> stick it on a sixty degree, you'll be fine. <laughs> Let me put it on the wall. Oh, God. Um, but yeah, uh, we've always said when the time is right. But I think we've got to respect. You know, we're not a professional football club, so we, yeah, we're not yeah. going to try and compete with a professional football teams. If someone is still in that frame of mind, then obviously they've got to do that and pursue that and, and do what they can. But you know, we're very much. Uh, there as a next best thing I would say depending yeah. on what you're look, trying to do in football but Bayo is just such a good fit for us if and when it happens because like I say he's there at the start him and I have done many things together over the years he's a good lad and isn't he's it? a big good friend Funny of mine guy. Like I'd love it on a personal level but also like I think he could do a lot of damage in the league we're in yeah for sure and um, it's a nice transition for someone I'd say coming to the end of their career especially if they're going into media stuff because of what our club is yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know there's a lot you can do there and it's a bit more flexible you come out of an environment maybe where you're training every day and doing all that to suddenly you know three sessions a week including games yeah. like, it's a nice little well that, that's it if you get like Fozzie and Bayo you just sack them midfield and then there you go yeah, route one yeah. bang over the top Tony Pulis dream man. <laughs> happy Wet days dream. he's all over it I've got to say we, so we played against Adebayo last year obviously he played for Wickham we were at Watford we were in the same league I know he's a, an absolute tank and he's not going to cover the yards he's not going to cover ground it's yeah. a given he's a big old bloke and he looked at times like his knees are shot but he would, yeah. he, do you know what I mean he'd do his job but for what he is and what he did I honestly I don't think I've ever played against anybody as good or as effective as what he did seriously they, they would just play to him all day long they would kick it up he would get hold of it he would he would be holding off two three men at a time he was incredible right he, he was man of the match tonight he was brilliant at Wickham wasn't he he was, brilliant. He, he was incredible he was a nightmare to play against honestly yeah. he was an absolute nightmare to play against but not only just as a player as a bloke like oh my god you hear the way he was talking to the lads and helping them and like really? like all that kind of stuff it was so nice to see like absolutely wicked kind of yeah, thing. He's so, top man. He's great yeah that'd be wicked so like in a couple of years time so guys this is this is my dream anyway I would love to do this I want to do one more year at Watford I'll do a year in America hopefully and then I'm coming to the tag. Then he comes to Basel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100% coming to the tag. Love that. Clip that, somebody. Oh, what's yeah, the goalie called? Who's the goalie? Sorry. It's, we got, well, well, Jacko's Jacko, 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 original yeah, keeper. Jacko and Pagey. Jacko's 42. And Jacko yeah. has said this is his last year. Is it? For sure. He said yeah. that four years in a row. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Just keep laughs> realistically, out. to be fair to me, he broke his leg at 40 and came back Fair from news, that. yeah. Um, and we've got Pagey as well. He's just joined us last season. But, I mean, you've got a couple of years to worry about that, mate. Yeah, so, don't yeah. worry about it. Non-league goalkeepers change every five minutes anyway. So <laughs> what do you do? Do you play out from the back or anything like that? Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to lump it anymore <laughs> in a couple of years' time. We can do. We've got, we've got 3G surface, mate. There you go. Surface. Surface. How do you feel I'll about that? I don't know if I'll be able to do many training sessions. <laughs> I'll turn up on a Saturday, lads. I'll say, I'll it's all in your head. I told you earlier. Really. I'll <laughs> be one of those guys. You got, you're either in or you're out. Of course I'm doing that. I'm not training. Look, I think I'm right in saying the club you started at, your very beginning of your youth career, was it Racing Club Warwick? You've done more research than us here, yeah. by the way. I think they're at the level that we've, well, they were at the level that we've, you've played maybe at the level we've just An gone equivalent to. level, basically. Yeah. So you're in the Ismian League now, which is the eighth level, eighth, eighth tier of uh, English football. Yeah. And I think back then, I think it was very similar sort of thing. So back then it was a Dr. Martin's Western that we were in. That's where I started, obviously. Um, which will absolutely, actually bring me really nicely onto the next part because... Uh, having played at that level it was semi-pro at the level we was training kind of Tuesday night and you would play on a Saturday or Wednesday or whatever it was um, I remember playing for Racing Club Warwick and I was on 30 quid a game yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so we would play on a Saturday afternoon I would get 30 quid in a brown envelope and it was like I'd won the lottery like, <laughs> honestly I'm not even joking here. how old were you at the time I was 17 years 17. old right and so I was getting 30 quid on a Saturday this is before United but this is before everything this is right. like before football started for right, me kind right, of thing. Right. I hadn't even turned pro at this level yet so I um I would get my thirty quid and we would we had just started going out the lads had started going out to Leamington and stuff like that so it paid for my Saturday night and th back yeah. then thirty quid would pay for your Saturday night so that was 
what, 20 odd years ago? Stop, leave my fan alone, all right? Um, so we were talking, so that's sort of like 20 years ago, okay, yeah, 20 years ago I would be on 30 quid a game. What are we talking now? What sort of pay scale are we talking for yeah. for hashtag, for example? Well, I mean, the league, it's mental what money there is in non-league now. So like, for example, I know a team, one level above us, who have gone fully professional. So who, who, they're not even, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, because it's a bit of a rumour, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 but yeah, they're yeah. not... Um, even in the conference, not even in so the we're talking wow. seventh, we're talking sixth, seventh, seventh tier, tier yeah. football, yeah. fully, and fully below the conference. Yeah, so which that, is mental. It is I mean, mental. Bear in mind that the conference and the, or the national leagues is now known isn't supposed to be professional. Everyone in the national prem is professional, so it's a professional league. It should be the fifth professional yeah, league. Yeah, yeah. And then the south and north, you're left behind if you're not really at this point. So it's like and we're only a couple of divisions away from that. So that I mean that, there is a lot of money in it, but there's a massive misnomer and common misconception yep. with hashtag that we throw money at our players. Yeah. I think like, that from the outside looking in, honestly, I, I would say you surely have a bigger budget than we have the lowest, we have, the lowest we have, wage budget in the, the league. Lowest budget of the league from last season. And we've said this, and no one believes us. But obviously, asking our players, like, no one believes yeah. us. The fact of the matter is, I'm very honest about it. I'm trying to run this club the right way. I'm not trying to. Um, throw a load of money at something to get something tomorrow and then change it. I'm trying to slowly yeah, progress yeah, the yeah, team yeah, yeah, so yeah. we never go backwards. So we see our first season in our league. We're in, the, we're in the 10th division at the time of England. Very few teams, some teams in that league were paying. Some teams were, but yeah. most of them weren't. Why would we pay in that league when we have, are the best team? In the, I mean, we're the biggest team for five leagues above us, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm being legit sure. here. Now, not everyone's going to agree with me. But in my opinion, we're the biggest team, certainly in Essex. We're bigger than Southend. We're bigger than Colchester. We're bigger than Chapter. Southland have been playing league football, but how many people in the world have heard of Southland United? I guarantee you, ten times that amount of people have heard of Hashtag United. For sure. Yeah. It doesn't mean that yeah. we're better than them. No. We're not. But you've got certain variables. We're, we're big. And so, at 10th level of English football, why would we pay? And this is not to discredit our players. There's players that could earn more money elsewhere. If they needed it, they didn't sign for us. It wasn't right for them. And yeah. I respect that. So, we went up to ninth tier. We did start paying very small expenses. But still, literally petrol fees. Yeah, and all I'm that not kind even would we'll cover yeah. it. Yeah, not yeah, even we'll yeah, cover yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. Three sessions a week wouldn't cover it, and that's been the case for the last two years. We are going to up it a little bit now in this league because we have to. But we will be one of the least paying teams in that league. I guarantee you. And at what point do you get to the stage where you're buying players? Because yeah. because we were chatting about this earlier, weren't we? And you hear like mad stories of like ex pros when they were playing non league and go, "I mm. was signed for like a." a set of kit and a chocolate bar or something bag of balls, <laughs> yeah, cones, bag yeah. of balls and some cones and you know, at what point do you start signing players we only buy a player if they're under contract and under yeah. contracts are quite rare at this yeah. level still you do get it but it's not common and then if they are under contract it's kind of like a massive barrier to a club like us at our level to buy someone because it puts a price on it so it just doesn't it's not going to happen for us anytime soon there'd be no need for us to what we're talking conference maybe if you get into conference maybe you have to start doing something I think like it that. depends on what we're trying to do I think we want to go we want to uh, We've had quite an old squad for the last few years. Yeah. Like right mm. first season in non-league, our defence was forty-year-old goalkeeper. You know, Tom Williams used to play yeah, for Wickham. Yeah, yeah. He was our left back. At he was in one of your videos the other day, weren't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so he was thirty-eight at the time. Mm. Simon Peddy was thirty-eight. Jack Harrison was thirty-five, mm. and then we had a twenty-five-year-old. Isn't like, that wrong with it? That's 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 yeah, it works. It, it does. Works. It gets you a long way. I think now we want to look for the future because a lot of those guys are guys been with us for a long time yeah. and they're sort of coming to the end of their journey with us. So I think that. Um, we want to try and we think our best strength as a club is to give young people a platform because it's such a great opportunity. Look at some of the stuff like Scott Pollock had at one of our first yeah, academy yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. He's pro now. Like it's a great opportunity to show what you can do. We have got a full youth team now. We've got 500 players across the boys and girls sections. We can be a great ladder for people mm. to then go and be what we can't be just yet, you know, which is a fully professional team. So that's what I think we want to do, isn't it, really? Yeah, I think... There is, a, there is a great way that we can, in, for a certain amount of time, and we may well be about to find out where the end of that is, is if someone's playing non-league and maybe getting 50, 100, 150 quid a week that maybe has a good job already and they do their football as a passion still. I know there's some people that do it as to supplement their income, but we can be a really exciting proposition for those yeah, sort of sure. people because they don't need to earn X amount of money. They might want to, but they might want a brilliant experience. And that's what we can offer them is they can come and play in front of literally hundreds of thousands of people every week, be stopped for selfies when they get petrol, at the, at the, you know, go to Tesco's, yeah. get selfies, feel like a pro yeah. without having to be at that level. So we can offer that experience. The and interesting there are other thing ways is, people can earn money as a result. Of course, like, you know, we're well. very fortunate with the partnerships and sponsorships we get there's lots of perks you're invited to things like we said it's earlier incredible, we, we get bringing out when you look at like you say about being a big club obviously you've got that internet base and the model's so unique so obviously where you are down in that part of the world there's a lot the non-league mm, side of things mm, is thriving mm. isn't it but obviously you've just come to the end of season three of the academy 
that must be massive for you because it's like tryouts, obviously for the youngsters and stuff. Um, it must be a massive recruitment. It's so, it is, and it is so rewarding because we all work so hard to deliver what we do. And when you get these people come who are serious about their football, especially in the more recent years that have gone up, the actual candidates we've got have been at a much higher and higher level. You come and you see how passionate, how much they want to play for our club. Yeah. And it gives everyone, if like, how cool is this? We've got thousands of people applying that want to be part of our club so desperately they're driving here driving they're giving up their time incredible, like, they love it so much they know everything about the videos like people like yoni like who's like, so knows everything about the, lad, the, club. the lad who's just got to the final he didn't win the final but and we end up signing loads of players from it we don't miss mm. one wins a contract and yeah, they're, sure, they're signed yeah. to the rest of consideration at least yeah, anyway, we're, yeah. We're, we've got the last eight of all part of our preseason this year so the eight boys mm. all got to the last eight uh, we did a women's series this year as well we yeah. signed the two finalists yeah, for that as well, well yeah. but the um yeah, the, the, the lad who got to the final, who's going to sign for us anyway, Yoni, we didn't know because we have so many applicants and we miss so many that he'd actually applied every single year and we'd never wow. invited him to a trial before. No and he was a player as well. And he's a really good, player. good player. Yeah, he, played, he was playing pro in Albania last year, or uh, Kosovo last mm. year, I believe. Um, so he's like, God, he only came home because of the virus. Bit, yeah. Yeah. He stayed out there, yeah. Were you guys, do you think you were the first sort of internet team? I mean, is we there anyone before you anyway? Do you know? Ben, that? Well, uh, so how you define Palmer's. it, really. Yeah. So yeah. Palmer's were the first Sunday team uh, on YouTube, really, from Sunday games, and, and in, in that essence, I would probably say it's very hard to, to uh, answer that question because, like, for example, we used to film our Sunday league team and put it on YouTube 15 years ago, oh, really? right? Yeah. But no one watched it. Yeah. So it's like veterans. Yeah, it's about yeah, a level yeah. of popularity years ago you have on to YouTube. Oh, yeah, I've been God. on YouTube for 15 years now. Wow. How old are you? Embarrassing, are you? Hello. No, I was on at the very beginning. But like going back to that then, so like, just just quickly, like when you talk about hash, how hashtag was conceived and stuff, because obviously we've been media pros now, we do our research, don't obviously. we? Obviously. And like, I was watching some videos back and it's like, your Sunday league team, you're obviously kind of do us because it was like your Sunday league team and you had the old check from um, from the bank when you had the, like, the yeah. grant to start up your own Sunday league team. Yeah. So it must just be a, a well, kind of willingness well, normally, to... Uh, normally the manager of a Sunday league team is the old guy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was or, our dad. Or it, it is. <laughs> uh, genuinely though, the, the, it's the old guy. It's the it's whoever you can get to do it. Yeah. The dad of one of the players, for example. You, like, you, you're like you doing this in your mid-20s. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like, to be fair, I've always been really busy. Like, basically, I don't mean that like... I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've wanted like to do that stuff. guy, you know, like... Yeah. Oh, you see bit. some of his spreadsheets. Uh, basically... <laughs> like, you were talking about heat Don't dis a spreadsheet. I came into football relatively late weirdly like Seb was way more into it than me I think I actually almost rebelled against football because of a sort of brotherly rivalry at first <laughs> so Seb was like really good at football as well so much, Seb, sorry Seb Tottenham fan West Ham you're a fan you know, yeah, really. <laughs> you know uh, what I need you a bit on that as well. <laughs> 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 I'm sure you did <laughs> our family's half Tottenham half West Ham yeah, yeah, yeah. but we're all West Ham um, but yeah I never got into it and then um I think it was through computer games, ironically. Yeah. I think it was actually from playing FIFA, FIFA 98 yeah, on the yeah. PC. And yeah, Spain um, got into it to a, such an extent where he was playing, I don't know what age it was, but there was a team you played for in Malden and you were like riding your bike to training like an hour each way to come back. Yeah, but just also to, like, it's a great story which is in my book, it's actually a game changer if you want to check out. So I'm available in <laughs> no good shops anymore because I think it's been pulped. <laughs> Alan Partridge. Had, had right, um, it was Sunday Times bestseller. It was, it? yeah. Let's yeah, not, it, not yeah, make a mistake. Anyway, there's actually a passage in there because one time, like I said, I was probably, the reason I was having to cycle eight miles is because I was really bad. Like, I mean, I'm not amazing now, but yeah, I, yeah. I've got better. I was quite bad. I've seen the teams. videos, mate. You're all right in that EE Cup thing. You're not bad. Uh, I remember the Cup. You said the other bad. day, gave yeah, me a nice you, confidence. You, you raise yeah. your game for those big ones. But yeah. at first, I really wasn't because I didn't start playing football until about 13, 14. Like, I didn't play any kid football. And then um, this, this team I was cycling to eight miles after school. I got hit by a car on the way to training. I got hit by a car. I actually hit my bike, but I went into the road, like scraped down my leg, bleeding, nothing serious. Did he stop? Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he was not. It was, it was, it was, actually, I think it was my fault. I think I actually fell off the road and went in, over the pavement. Yeah, went, yeah, I, I, yeah. I was only 14 or something, 15. But anyway, the po point of them is, this is how keen I was. I was a mile from the ground when it happened and I thought I'm going to be late. So my, car, my bike was crumpled in two. So I picked up my bike, jogged the rest of the mile, got there. I'm like 15 minutes late. All I was thinking of is how I'm not going to play on the weekend because I'm late for training. I turn up, not really, I'm literally covered in blood. I and my manager it. goes to me like, you, what's, what, what's going on? I was like, I'm so sorry, I'm late. And he was like, no, you, you look like you're dying. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about training. It's he not made, the end he made of the me world. kept it on the spot like that. Because Love based that, on yeah. that, which I subsequently got taken off me about <laughs> a month later because none of the boys liked him. None of the boys liked him. 
Oh, we got some beers on the oh, way. Look at that. He has bought some beers. They look like proper cold bad boys as well. Jem, you're a legend. Jem, you are a legend, mate. No problem at all. Top man, thank you, mate. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, yeah, sweet mate. Enjoy. Thank you, yeah, Tomasi. So, so when you're setting up yours. hashtag them, so obviously you've set it up. So pre that, I'd I'd set up Cheers, a team mate. at 16. Yeah. I then ran my university team. Yeah. Like I was always running a team because I was the guy that w- would be bothered to do that. So his hashtag was an inevitability. Yeah. Essentially, what wasn't inevitable was the success we've had. That's sure. the lucky bit, I guess. At what point though? Does what point running hashtag and starting hashtag? Did you go? Okay, we're we're on to something big time here. We need to run with this. What point does that happen? I never think we really had that yeah. moment. We've had these. We've had a few moments along the years where, because the thing is, so much has happened. There's never been a time to stop a breath. I remember one particular moment at one of the second or third Wembley Cups, which is like a, a, a big game put together every year or used to put it together every year with EE where you actually play a game at Wembley. We've yeah. had loads of people watch it online and in the stadium. And one particular year, we did a draft system or a system where other pros would play as well. We've had like the Stevie G, etc. Rhea Ferdinand was set to play. He had to pull out the day before with a calf injury. Yeah, yeah, Spencer and I were in his um, dining room with a whiteboard looking at the options of who we should sign to play for us, Galas or Mendieta. Right? <laughs> and we were watching highlights of them on YouTube going, who should we sign for hashtag? We stopped. We are like, hang on a minute. Can we just take a moment? You think, yeah, what's Gallas going on here? Ben Gallas. Oh, oh, Gallas. Oh, Gallas. Oh, unbelievable. We need a new defender. We need a new defender. Yeah, it was, it was pretty position. Yeah, he's, got, uh, he's got a hammer right for William Gallas. Come on, do you remember okay. him back in the day? He scored an absolute belt of He played so well day. for us. It's amazing. Guys. But the funniest bit about that story, which said probably left out to be respectful, but I'll happily tell it, <laughs> is uh, we're sitting in this dining room and we Gallas had just finished a year in Australia. We went to Australia for a end of his career. And there's this one thing he did in the game, which is like, honestly, if you watch it, you'll think Gallas is the worst football you've ever seen, which he obviously isn't, but he has this one moment where he just moment. loses all football ability. It's like a ridiculous... <laughs> like that Space Jam moment where they yeah, lose their power. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like you were golf early. You were yeah. the yeah. <laughs> you know, no, it's not one. Experience. It's like three things in like a 10 second moment. You're Constant. like, what is this? Yeah. And I'm watching it with Seb and I'm thinking, Gallas ain't good enough. That's when we stopped. We'll we play like, Jack. Who do we I'm think we are that we're saying Gallas isn't good yeah. enough? Obviously, he came in and he was unreal, like you yeah, said. Yeah, he was unbelievable. But yeah, that was the pinch yourself moment. Yeah, just like crazy things like that or like looking, looking back on it. But throughout the journey, like, so much has happened and it's been such a like uh, snowball. One thing has led to another thing, to another thing, to another thing. It hasn't really been like... Well, for me, a key moment, when Seb like, got involved in, in, in the sort of business side of what we do, we sat down and we, it didn't happen like naturally as straight away from this but we said explicitly we wanted to create something bigger than ourselves it wasn't just a youtube channel yeah. that was only relevant if people wanted to watch yeah, me for play you, FIFA for and there's legacy yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's for sure forever, yeah, create it? something that could be you know you know who knows you know i'm one of the older ones of like the youtube first generation yeah, yeah. Like, i'm 32 now but when i was getting into youtube and it was kicking off for me i was like 25 and all these guys at like ksi were all 16 17 yeah. yeah so i was a little bit further on so i'm thinking well what's you know how relevant am i going to be are people going to want to watch me when i'm 30 am i going to want to do it when i'm 30 all these things so i was like well if i can create something that i love and work within that yeah you can just let it run itself as which well is what we've tried to do well, we, we've we've done a few videos recently so we did one the other week with um chris md we did it with um mini mentor people like that and just, just from as we've got going and got and talking to these other sort of YouTube stars, these like social media people, blah, blah, blah. And we'll, we'll, your name will inevitably come up somewhere along the line kind of thing. And they're like, yeah, I used to play for, for Hashtag. Like Theo Baker, yeah, yeah, for example. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Everyone yeah, yeah, has I, played I used to for play hashtag. for Hashtag. And I was like, what? Yeah, was it? Was and it? literally you have had like virtually everybody that's big in the UK sort of like YouTube scene basically has played for you or guys at some point. Or against, yeah. yeah, I mean, or with, with the you. Wembley Cup, because we sort of, for that, hashtag plays against like a YouTube All-Stars yeah. team and we get some other players in for us. So it has been like... Um, Theo yeah, Baker was our much. first marquee signing. Yeah, yeah. Was that, it, yeah. We he backed a couple, yeah, didn't he, at the yeah, Wembley yeah, Cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, Malfoy. Go on, Malfoy. Go on, Malfoy. actually, he's very injury prone, unfortunately, but he's actually a very good player. Yeah, he's yeah, a lovely yeah. He's got his own team now, hasn't he? Yeah, Garden FC. Saw so the video with um, Trent and, like, um, yeah. he can he can rattle the ball, can't he? Yeah, he can struck the ball, yeah. Yeah, and so we it started, it was literally just my mates from school and Seb's mates from uni. That was the only people that played. And then we just slowly... Found people, Evolved it, yeah. invited people in because we had to, and that's where the academy came in. The academy now is, is turned into something that's actually for finding good footballers. The first series was literally a competition to basically give a viewer of Martin or hashtag the chance to do these cool matches. We were playing in America, we were playing in stadiums. It was just 
we didn't think we'd find a kid that yeah, could be pro. Sure, we yeah, we'd never find never I was reading about it last night and I saw I said to you, didn't I, there was a three thousand pound like prize for the first I said, Imagine being like seventeen, eighteen years of old or whatever and you've just won it for hashtag and then you've got three grand burning an hole in your back pocket. Well, Scott's second like, wow. game for us was at the Emirates. His fourth game for us was at Wembley in front of thirty four thousand. You don't get those chances. You no, don't get to do that. Northampton Pro just extended his pro contract. Yeah. Yeah, he played against Wayne Rooney in the FA Cup uh, a couple of seasons ago. It's Derby. incredible, isn't it? How, um, how have you found the sort of the management of people and not only just the players kind of thing and the the staff, all that kind of stuff? How have you found sort of I, managing I will, people I will be, in I that arena? I think you'll agree with me, Spen. We've never really spoken about it, but I'll be quite comfortable to say that when we went into non-league, despite the fact that we, I think we've managed very well, I don't think we ever properly understood just how much extra work there'd be. Well, we like knew we couldn't how, do it on our own. Just like we, we were going from, in, back in the days, we had our own sort of divisional structure. We played two games a month. So that's two match videos and some other content. And we'd maybe have one session a month, maybe even two months to do like challenge videos. And we'd yeah. just smash a few out at once. To then go into like multiple training sessions, multiple matches, uh, filming all of it, uh, more crew, more locations, more, more production. Um, and then you've got an external source like the FA, who have to abide by the rules and regulation, learn on the go, and then you've got all these additional players, and that's continued to get big with the women's team, the youth team, now we've got these committees of yeah. like 30, 40 people on them, we've got compliance, like health and safety, like yeah. young youth welfare, all yeah. these things, there's now so much that's going on all the time. 500 people play for Hashtag now, from under like fives yeah, up to like, uh, up to, well, the first teams, yeah. and they've all got parents, and they've all got, there's so much happening now. And, um, the infrastructure is strong, isn't it? You've got a, a pretty solid proper. set. It's a solid setup yeah. you've got, and you've got like what first team resis, women's, like you say, uh, all the all the all the youth all structure, all the youth yeah, ages, yeah. all of the youth ages. Like we, like my son plays sort of under twelves, under elevens, under twelves kind of thing, and even that team is like a local team. But there's there's all the youth structure. You have got the men's team, and it's an effort. Like just yeah, like the amount serious, of people that commit so effort. much time. Obviously, we've got a lot of full time staff, mostly on the production side. But then you've got, like, there's now so many volunteers who, like, put in so much time. And that's very obviously apparent yeah. in non-league in general, right? Like, these clubs are yeah, built yeah, off yeah. communities. A lot of volunteers. And, it's a lot important of that to give credit where it's yeah. due. Like, we didn't, like, the youth team was an existing youth team. Of course. Merged with. So there's a team called Forest Glade in, in Billericay in Essex. So they've been doing great things since, since the early 90s. And we know them. Our manager, Jay Devereaux's kids play for that team. So he yeah. introduced us to them. We knew we wanted a youth structure. And it was... No, we created Hashtag from scratch in terms of entering the pyramid as our own team. But creating a youth... 500 kids overnight from scratch yeah, it's just not, yeah, it's, it's not just crazy so we were able to merge with an existing team and actually mutually benef uh, benefit from it because we became a bigger club they now have access to things like the, in our area it's called the EJA League so it's like the, the highest level of football you can play if you're not in an academy yeah. a youth level you have to be affiliated to a, a, a league club to do that which Forest Grade weren't so by, it was a mutually beneficial merger so they've been able to kick on we've kicked on uh, same with the women's team our women's team the highest ranked women's team in Essex uh, in the fourth tier right now, um, so just yeah, three three divisions below the women's super league. They That's were an existing team. What a story! In guys. the same league as Ipswich, Norwich, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Cambridge, well, yeah. Leighton Orient, you know, formerly known as. So we like let's let's take your first team and your women's team, right? So at your level, how important is ability versus the people? Because you might have a. A worldy player or something, and if they're a bit of a cannon, bit of a yeah, mm. bit of a cannon, a problem in the dressing room, basically. Yeah. Like, how important is that for you, or do you just look for ability, or do you take these things into consideration? I think we're we're very fortunate. We're in in Jay Devereaux, who's our manager. Is he's not only like knows his way around. What's, what's Jay's background, by the way? Because he was assistant manager. At he's played at, he's, yeah. as a player. He's played every level up to the conference prem. Yeah, and okay. all the way down. So he knows that sort of arena massively. Like, yeah, yeah, massively. Yeah. yeah, for sure. He retired early, at about twenty nine thirty. Um, started to sort of semi retire because of injury. Yeah. So he got into coaching quite young, um, and then we knew him because our dad's been in non league as a physio or, or, like since we were kids. So my dad was physio for East Thurrock, which is the team. At the right. time, they were yeah, in the National yeah, yeah. League South. Devs was the assistant manager there. And I started filming them for YouTube. So I, as I'm saying before, hashtag, I, was, I used to go to their games, film their games. They got to the FA Cup first round against Hartlepool, went up, filmed that. Um, their manager at the time, John Coventry, was really good. He just let me come in. I was this 21, 22-year-old kid who just wanted to film. The videos were getting a 1,000 views, whatever. Do you know what I mean? It was a very small channel at the time. But basically accidentally because I didn't know hashtag was going to happen I met this core group of people who I've all brought into hashtag so yeah. devs and Joe Keith with the two assistant managers they're my manager and assistant manager now 
uh, half a playing squad have played for me since then that I've yeah. brought in towards the end of their career like I know personally and that comes back to your question about bad eggs in the change room we don't tend to have them mm. because we don't let them in the club yeah, right? yeah, we're, just, we're quite protective of that I think, I think you, the, the type of player you would attract would like I said you said earlier about they can sort of they might they could probably play higher they could yeah, yeah. but I think the exposure that hashtag will give them uh, probably and this the area this sort of the age that we live in kids love that don't they mm. you know what I mean even like 22 23 year olds they love that exposure so they might sort of forgo the level to play for you guys but you know that they're gonna they're gonna pull their weight and they're not gonna be sort of dickheads in the change rooms and stuff like that because I see it all the time as well we might I think that's what Dev's Dev, has just got he, he, he's like a lovely lovely guy then he's got a mode he'll go into yeah. where he's, he's all about business seen it. Seen he, it. he basically just wouldn't tolerate it like, yeah. it wouldn't last five minutes if you're Good a complete manager, joke he'd just be like that, you know, he'd make the decision. I'd rather it's a real shame because I think they're a great player, but it's not going to work. Yeah. It's he'd brilliant because we're watching like the academy series and obviously all your videos and stuff, and watching. Um, obviously, it's by design, and it's a little bit what Fozzie does with his channel. It's kind of opening it up and making it a community, and people kind of know devs and yourselves and the players. You know, Jacko and Gar characters. It's like it's a characters. It's, it's like a soap, soap, isn't it? You do. You have yeah. to have recurring characters. The, the challenge kind of in that, though, because that's what it was at the start. But the challenge of non-league is just the nutrition. The, no, it's the, yeah, sure. yeah. It's just mm. the movement of players. So, like, as much as we've been, Jacko has basically been amazing. He's kept playing, and he, he also lives nowhere near. He lives two hours really? away. So he's far away. He lives in, in Windsor. Is he as angry Windsor. as he looks? Yeah, uh, he's, uh, he's a sweetheart. He would be. He's a sweetheart. Absolutely sweetheart. He's a sweetheart. He is. He is. two and a bit Jacko, hours I every you, session. <laughs> so he and he so he could have put his hands up and quit any day, and we no one would have judged him for it. But he's kept going, absolute legend, even after the leg break. Um, but he's actually the only one left now as a player. Jack, Jack, Jack Harrison, Harrison coming back. I my my friend yeah. from school, I've been playing like football with a tennis ball in the playground since we're twelve years old together. He was our club captain when we won the league the first year in non-league. He did his um, ACL playing in a friendly interclub friendly two oh. years ago this month yeah. and he's just returned to training Whoa. this like last week and he, he was I mean, and he, he's like 36 he's now he's captain of independent England school bo- yeah. uh, school boys or whatever good player. Like, proper player yeah some good players yeah. but um, yeah he, he so if he comes back that's great and, and let's say we get one more year out of them there, there will come a time where we have no one left in the beginning mm. so when it comes to the soap operas uh, and the characters you're talking about it's the people off the pitch it's yeah, me and sure. Zeb who yeah, are every yeah. game mm. it's you know Cesar now to an extent it's our people like LP one of our presenters who's been with us for a long time it's Alex it's it's who's it's, the guy that does sorry sorry to interrupt who's the guy that um, films because I was watching the bit when Devs was um, doing the academy bit and the guy comes up to him at the wrong time yeah that's LP, LP. That's ask LP. him a question Blonde hair. and Devs kind of like cut yeah. him down and I was they've like, got a little oh. bit of a love hate relationship yeah, yeah. And, but it was like nice to see you could tell yeah. it was yeah. like not now no, but yeah. he was serious yeah. but it was kind of like yeah and that's where Devs was a great capture because he uh, he won't mind me saying like he wasn't like your classic sort of he wouldn't have watched YouTube before he, he came yeah. to yeah. us yeah. Yeah. His, his kid his, his lad and that gave us so much does. credibility by the way because we came into the non-league world and that was a big thing when we whenever we talk to people about hashtag a lot of the times the question is how are you perceived by traditional non-league because you're coming from a YouTube team yeah. called hashtag United yeah. going up against you know teams that have been around hundreds of years real old school committee led like old boys type teams and you, 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 we were perceived exactly the way you think you, we would be. However, when you have a manager like Jay Devereux, they're like, well, he's from our world. If he's getting his name to it, there must be something yeah, which gives us maybe half the door in. Actually, we're throwing money at him. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. People just find the easiest possible route to explain it in their heads, in which they always think is money. Like, and, and we do have money. Like, We're not hiding away from that. We have great sponsors, which is what Seb you know, does, does a great job at bringing in for the club. But we don't throw it at the players. And, and I'm sure they'd love it if we did. Guys, quickly, can I just interrupt you as well? Uh, this morning, I rung you, didn't I? I said, one thing in football I love doing like to the lads. like we'll, So say if we, if we get like a young player come in to the first team or something like that, right? I'll always make a point of going, right, you've got to go, got to stand on the stage and you've yeah. got to introduce yourself. You've got to say who you are, position, all that kind of... And they're like, oh, they're nervous. It's horrible, right? But then I'll go, you've got to answer some questions as well. The question I'll always ask, right, is... How much do you earn, mate? How much do you want a week, right? And you would not believe the amount of young lads that, because they're in front of like the senior players, will go eight hundred pound a week. So it's incredible. As soon as they said it, it's incredible. So anyway, I said to I said to Tom earlier, I said um, I said I'm going to do like a like a, a search on Google how much Seb and Spencer are worth from yeah, hashtag. No, no, so right. anyway, so anyway, so anyway, it's funny. I love it. Oh, this is so we all, no, like, it's not. It's golden. I really know what you're saying. It's not. It's not true. Because we all know that Google is so bang on and exactly it is what it is, right? So it is what it is. So if Google says it, okay, we have got here. So Seb, I'll start with you. You're the big dog, by the way. All right. 
you earn between, you are worth, sorry, your value for you is between one and five million dollars, all right? Bargain. Big bro. So Wait, value right. is a footballer? No, no, no. That, that's how much money he's got in the bank, all right? So uh, you've got between a golfer. one and a half, one and <laughs> yeah. five in the bank you have. And uh, Spencer, winning. sorry, mate, you've only it's got $700,000 in the bank. <laughs> it's probably close to the truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I mean, they, I don't know how they get that. They get it's outrageous. View, the thing is, yeah, if you Google that, that, within like four clicks, you've got eight different answers, haven't you? Exactly. Yeah. 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 I just outrageous. took the first one out. Like, Basically, you just add a couple of zeros really. and you're probably about right. <laughs> <laughs> like, go back to the credibility thing, though. So... Do you have much resistance? Is there much kind mm. of like... Well, we had a couple of big wins early on. So like we, we're very fortunate that the whole show is able to happen to the scale it does because of some of the partnerships we're able to do yeah. because of how, how much support we get from the audience, right? So that brings a lot of opportunity. And one of the ones that brought early on by Football Manager was they were going to make a version of the game because their game stops at a certain level, way above where we play, Nationally, right? Yeah. But they made a version of the game that put every player yeah. in our club, in our league, into the game. Just your team. So all of our every, opponents. Every, no, every, every, every opponent. Every league. So they wow. basically, all our opponents, all of a sudden, yeah. were in Football Manager because we're in the league. So straight away, all the players are like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's not bad. That's super so cool. little things like that. But then Devs has always been big from the very beginning. Like silly things that may not sound like a lot, but like leave the change room cleaner than you find it. Yeah, like nice. little things like that, and it's the people nice. that build Standard. clubs, those things you have a chat with someone. Oh, do you know hashtag actually the time up? Yeah. Did they? Hmm, okay, interesting. Harry's so, they, that, over you know? a number of years, yeah. they're starting to, and no, there's not anything to like. You know, we'll get out. No, it doesn't matter though. It's we just not, try it's and do the right things. Word I think anyone out, that takes the time lunch. to like literally see what the team is like with people, like you always say it. They say, hashtag United, where well, it's just a team of mates. Isn't that how every football club ever started? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Isn't that how every club ever started? Like, we're West Ham, Thames Ironworks, people that worked in a factory together. You know, it's like it's, we, we're people that have been worked, like, people that actually created the club, people that worked on the internet together that just called hashtag because we're on the internet and social media rather than Who the a name? factory. Where'd the name come uh, from? The name came from actually when I worked for another YouTube channel called Copper 90. Yeah. We created a seven aside team that we just played for fun in London. Yeah. And actually, I've gone fast like forward. Like Power League, like Power yeah, League. Yeah, it's Power League. Yeah, we yeah. called our team Hashtag FC because we all worked in football, social media. But that actual name come from an idea that I pitched to Copper Knightley that they binned off, which I understand why they binned it off, to be fair, it was the right decision, which was like, do you remember Fash FC? John Fash yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like a modern day version of that, where I was going to be the presenter and manager of the team, and I was going to have an iPad, and we were going to live stream the games. And the, the on on uh, on Twitter, you could tell us what we want to do. Substitute. This is like ten that. years and ago. Right? This is incredible. This is only ago. starting to just happen. By so the this way, this happened. Yeah, yeah. I think there's one team, isn't there? Where I heard it on the radio last year, where there was a team where that you can literally vote for. Quite a few teams have tried it. It doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. It's carnage. It's absolutely Grey's carnage. Grey's Street did try it with something called My Football Club about ten years ago mm. as well. Not with Twitter and live streaming, but we, you were a sixty quid a year member and you could vote for the team for it for the lineup on the weekend. It's, a, it's an awful way to run a football club. Of course it is. We were trying to create a content show. We were, we didn't, it was a Sunday team what we were doing this, in this series but they, they didn't do it because we were a brand new channel we had no subscribers that idea works you need enough people watching mm. to make so the vote relevant if seven people well. vote and go yeah sub John off you need 7,000 people voting do you know what I mean so hashtag FC, we never was... did it I kept the name personally seven aside team hashtag FC then we needed a name for this where did the United in there for a couple of reasons really one we thought it sounded better and two Maybe because of West Ham. Just one reason. Also, <laughs> is to differentiate from this thing, just in case Copper came up, you know, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, down yeah, the line. Which it wasn't, because the idea was completely it different. Was right. you know? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we we used to play four aside in Coventry, so we used to play four aside, and it was nets around the whole mm. pitch, so the ball couldn't go out. You know the sort of furry green ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, I've got uh, your two car. in my car right now because I do yeah. Tuesday nights. And we were we were Real Zaragoza's, weren't we? Real Zaragoza's, and that was it's like a nice fantasy football team, and it was like every week it was like you know it's Coventry, and it was it was from feisty games Lively. Like, we, I, one, I, we, we used to play this one team and it was like there was a oh, fight there's, there's a, a fight. fight it's 100% a fight and, the, and you horrible. were like when you'd go in goal oh. there'd be clean sheets in, in like four or so games <laughs> where there's about 100 shots yeah. usually 100 so shots, we'd yeah. go outfield and there was this one game and it was like I remember the team we were playing against and he's like we weren't shy were we and he's like stuck his foot in and you were at Stoke at the time and then there was this and he ran straight hobbled straight off the pitch Went straight out the door, got in your car. I had a pop you, in my knee. And then you, what, did you, oh. did, what did your dad absolutely roasted him? Oh, he roasted How me. How old are you at this point? I was 90. I'd just done my first year at Stoke City. Oh, um, God, playing four and I told, I told him I did it in the summer, playing tennis with my brother. 
um, they fell for it. Actually. It came on. Do you know the worst thing was? It's the first time. The first time I've told that story. Because you were like what fourth, fifth choice at Stoke. Oh yeah, I was still a nobody. Yeah, yeah. And even like I was like sat at home, and it was the first time ever. It came on the like ticker tape on Sky, and it was like teletext. It was about then. No, it was Sky. Yeah, you're not quite that old. And it was like. Ben Foster uh, does a crucial thing when playing tennis with his brother. I'm like, oh my God. How oh. many stories out there that we buy, buy on Sky Sports are actually people playing yeah. WWF in their yeah. gardens, really? 100%. Well, right, do you remember when uh, Wayne Rooney got knocked out by um, Phil Bardsley? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was like, and the video came out. Of it. We've had loads. We had yeah. one pre-season a few years ago at West Brom. Simon Cox, you remember him? Striker. Yeah. Yeah. Scored that banger against Tottenham once. We were playing golf. Like, we had an off day or something like that. We were playing golf. He was in the bunker. Tripped over, slipped his, like, did his ankle. I mean, did his ankle. Wow. Proper did his ankle. He had to, like, basically tell the physios he did it walking down a step, something, blah, blah, blah. Happens all the time in football. Wow. For sure happens yeah, well. all the time in football. Wow. Did you, did you learn, learn your lesson from that? I've not? done my cruciate three times. No. Uh, playing for a side, though. <laughs> 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 not playing for a side. Did you keep playing for a side? I think I've done it three times because I did it in the that same one. The same one? You think? I've done it twice on that one and then one on the other oh. one just for good measure, just to even out a little right. bit. It's a horrible injury, though. ACL, yeah, like you're saying about that kid who was too Two years honestly yeah. it's the most what was oh. the quickest comeback you did from an ACL uh, the quickest comeback was eight months and, and the long obviously really good pros yeah, yeah. but the longest is yeah. longest of the year it's, I mean it's touch it. wood that's not I've yeah. not done it was that grim, wasn't it? I remember yeah. when you did it and it was like your leg I remember when you started walking no, and there was no muscle in your leg it was it horrible was, it was horrible weren't it right guys we're getting there you are obviously massive on YouTube like Seb does golf by the way let's give Seb does golf a massive mention we were actually going to film today weren't we so we played golf yeah, we've got to do it another time mate we'll, we'll do it another time for sure You're a lo Seb's a lovely golf player by the way like lovely prop, like proper All right, you're proper to be fair very kind of you say, but not today, was it? <laughs> you could see that. Every, not you today, was it? Like little brother years. was better than oh. big brother today. Yeah, <laughs> only well, the 32 shots. And he kept himself. <laughs> like, when, you, when you mention like copper, copper, so like, Spencer, your kind of route in was more mainstream, wasn't it? And like Seb, you obviously had like normal jobs. You like did your Red Bull in what, 05, 06, whatever, like coaching and stuff. And you were like copper knighting, copywriting and stuff. And you, I always think this with really good like YouTubers. I always think, did they would they have got their break in mainstream? And it's they're almost like talents falling through the cracks of mm. mainstream media. Mm. And like, yeah. I guess a question I'd, I'd love to ask is like, I ask a lot of YouTubers is, if you had like a gig served up to you now with like Sky Sports or a BT or someone like that, and it was like, right, here's a here's a, a regular gig. What do you mean, like commentating? Kind yeah, of commentating. Yeah. Right, so I, I can answer this really interesting. I think really interestingly, it? right? So when I, so after I did those things, I worked in sales. I started a solar panel company. I did that was quite successful for a yeah. number of years. Then Spencer became, was growing really quickly. Asked me to help him with his sort of commercial activity. One of the one of the first conversations we had was, "What's the goal? Yeah. What are we doing? You've now got millions of people watching you. What do you want to do for it?" And the goal was, right at the beginning, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was, I'd love to one day be on Talksport, be on Sky, be these things, right? Yeah, okay. And after a certain amount of time you start to realize that through platforms like YouTube and Instagram, et cetera, that Spen was able to develop a voice that was to a, in platform. some areas the same size or, yeah. in, or in certain times even bigger than those things. Yeah. So all of a sudden, some of those opportunities came up and bearing in mind, when you're talent for hire, you're buying a skill for a certain amount of time. Spencer has that skill, I can say, even though he's my brother, I can, I can, I can admit he's got some very good he's talent that way down. He's very good. I think he's got a chance he's to be very, He's very good, but also <laughs> as well, what you're then acquiring is the reach. So, you know, you link uh, any piece of content, uh, movies, uh, TV shows, you're buying the actors, then you've got to distribute it. Yeah. So you've got to get that message, that, that content out to a lot of people. When you have your own YouTube channel, you have the talent and you have the distribution, right? So it becomes, uh, all of a sudden, what you can do individually becomes a lot more valuable than what you can do for someone else because they're getting all the value from it, right? So it's a really interesting dynamic mindset shift. But then after a certain amount of time, you then have to be the guy that's write the thing yeah, to, sing the thing to. Yeah. For me, I can like speak this. for myself, and obviously everything Seb just said then is, is, is true of every creator, you know, and mm. people way bigger than me, but what I can speak from experience is, I think it's cyclical. So I, I grew up wanting to be in this industry. Like I did hospital radio, I did uni radio, I did stand up comedy, I did all these things trying to you be did in this stand -up industry. stand up comedy. And everyone's always surprised yeah, when I yeah, say yeah. that. I wasn't successful at it, clearly, because I didn't add to go on YouTube. That's so. hard work. Couldn't that, be that. Yeah. 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 Say that's, that must be one of the most, uh, no, yeah. no, no, no. Well, for me, you know, Seb used to come to with my biggest fan. He'd come to my gig. <laughs> <laughs> He's heckler. <laughs> You're the one in the back. Like, love oh, it. Love I it. love yeah. that joke. That's I've so heard funny. it every time. You do the same stuff all the time. It's <laughs> funny. No, but the, um, the, that, that process, I did that for like two, three years. And it just, whatever you get from it, for me, what I got from it is just fearlessness. Because I was like, I, I, 
you think this is going to bother me? I've died on my ass in front of three yeah. people. Yeah, and yeah. I felt like I want the world to eat me, like, because this is so painful. So, like, if I've done that, like, do you think I'm more worried about, worried about doing that? And so it's helped me massively, I would say, everything else. I never liked it as a job. I never, didn't get paid much for doing it. But when I even when I did, like, you'd go all over the country, like, travelling on Fridays and Saturdays. You can have no social life to do 10 minutes, 15 minutes, because, you know, I never did it long enough to do, like, an hour or anything for no real money. And then I actually you started making videos, and I was like, oh, I made a video. In the time that I've gone and done a gig and earned a hundred quid, exactly, this yeah. video's got a few thousand views. I only gigged to a tenth of that amount of people, so that's why I sacked it off. But by the time I got through all that, I always was trying everything I could to get into this industry. Originally not football. Originally just wanted to probably have a Radio One slot something. or something. And then obviously loved football. Started making that content, get into it. Then I was like, okay, I'd love a talk sport gig or something like that. But then you grow your own platform because at that time YouTube wasn't good for anything else. It yeah, wasn't people sure, weren't making sure, money sure. off it. It was a CV. It's all it was. Yeah. You get that end of it and you're like, okay, there's something here. Maybe I should just stay on this stuff. And then you grow and you start hiring people and you start creating a, you know, business yeah. sets like this. Your own broadcast production. company, basically. But then yeah. you become a manager. This is the problem, and this mm. is why I have to have people like Seb, for sure, people yeah. like Neil Smythe, who's massive for us at Hashtag, is I never wanted to do that part of things, and that's when probably like my d most difficult moments because I was just like. How have I got it? From being, I would say, hopefully objectively good at what I did, I have got to a point where I don't like my job anymore because it's a really cool job. And yeah, suddenly yeah. I'm, I'm worrying about people's holiday and when they're going to take time. I'm supposed to be making football videos here. What's happened? I think the answer is no. I think <laughs> if I think if TalkSport or Sky came... No, but the thing well, is, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying he really enjoys now. He does now. Bit, yeah. I've come out that side of it. And if I didn't have the other people working around me, I, I, I'd much, probably yeah. been this off, to yeah, be honest. Sure, and that's yeah, not, I'm not very grateful. I am. But I'm not here to be a manager of other people. It's not what I want to do with my life. Yeah. So like that now, if you have time, time is the hardest thing because hashtag is an easier full time job on its own, let alone the other stuff I do. But the idea of walking into a room where you just get paid to talk and walk Simple, out in and out is yeah. actually quite enjoyable sure, yeah. because otherwise, these other shows I do, like I'm saying, when we're starting this podcast, I'm thinking about the technical side because I usually have to worry about is that recording, is all these things happening, and it's quite stressful. Right, so guys, so last week, me and Tom, we had like a little bit of a technical thing. It's our first thing we've ever run into, right? We've always run very, very smoothly, but we did a video. It, it was actually in this room, wasn't it? And we had the main camera sort of behind you where you're sitting, Spencer, and Tom sent the, the footage off to the editor. I thought. He thought, but he didn't actually send one of the files, and it was the main file of the main camera. So he sent it, thought it had all sent, thought it had all been downloaded at the other end, deleted all the files. Can I he, just he add, because I still feel a need to kind of justify and defend my actions here. I never normally touch anything, anything, until it's on YouTube. Until it's live. But I like to be quite organised, and I had about 30 uh, uh, my, like micro SD, SD cards, cards yeah, on yeah, yeah. my desk. And I was like, this no, is He's blown, got OCD. Tom's got OCD. Like, my mind, so I was like, crazy in, OCD. Delete, reformat, reformat, anymore, yeah. reformat, and like that. And then, you know, when we transfer, it goes, your... Uh, Thing has file has been successfully downloaded. Successfully downloaded. Yeah. So I was at three files, three emails. We're all good. Frank, our editor, messaged me and goes, "Where's the Sony one?" So I'm like, looked at the third email. There was a problem sending the oh. files, and I was like, "Oh my god." Oh, anyway, it was fine. I didn't even moan, to be honest with you. Like, I didn't know there was not a problem. Like it was cool. It was what it was. I didn't. I cried like a baby. <laughs> like, I remember, honestly, he called me and I went, "Fine." Yeah, it fine. was like it was like I was ringing my <laughs> missus. It was you know when they go, you know when they just do the. It's fine. It's yeah, literally yeah. I can't imagine there's any YouTuber that hasn't had that yeah. worst. So or yeah, this is what times. I was gonna say. So what is the it. worst sort of thing that's ever production, happened to you? The production thing, thing ever. That's ever I happened to I can think of two 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 instances come to mind. So like Seb will probably speak better to this than me, but you know it's not always easy working with family. And or probably not easy working with me. It's probably an easy thing to say. <laughs> oh, and, um, one of them, are you? Well, I, th I actually think I've mellowed out in the last few years. I don't know if you agree or not, but I certainly uh, <laughs> see what you see next week. Yeah. Um, no, certainly. I think first, like, well, I was quite stressed. Basically, I used to make a video every day. And Spencer's it just, a perfectionist. Yeah. It, took, it took a lot out of me, like making that many videos. I think, if I'm being honest. And um, our younger brother used to work for us as well. And I had an instance where I did lose it a little bit, where we'd done a video with the F2 freestylers back when we used to do videos with them. And um, the uh, it was a good shoot. We did a, a football medal like montage skill shot sort of thing. And my younger brother it happens all the time because on the other story I'll tell is it was a mistake I made. Um, lost the footage, or lost the footage on one camera. I think oh. it was. Video still existed. The video was still fine. But it was not as good as it could have been. There was a lot of good stuff that was. That lost. was like ours, weren't it? Yeah, Very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I, I, I mean, I, I'm not. 
I didn't lose it with him or anything, but I think I was probably, in hindsight, made a bigger deal out of it than I could. And then, and then I should have. And I think the reason I probably did that was because I was like, how do I stop it happening again? You know, make such a big deal out of it. But when I wish, when I look back at it, I kind of wish I hadn't have made such a big deal out of it because we didn't even lose the video. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It just wasn't mm. as good Still as it went out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that, you that care was... about it. I think, like, the way we viewed it is we were, like, thinking, oh, the audience, the fans, you know, are, are not going to re- like it. And yeah, there was, yeah, yeah. I think there was one comment that, like, so I think the fact that we're both, you know, perfectionists. It's a one-off, exactly. Funny, yeah. for, funny yeah. silly one I had. When I start, just started making golf content, um, I've been very lucky to film with loads of, like, football guys over the years and make some great content. One of the first ones I ever got was an opportunity to play with, uh, film with Ian Wright. And he says he was about to go and play a goal, uh, in a golf round. He, gave, he had 10 minutes before, it was pissing rain. And there was a guy from the agency there who was going to help me film. Because it's before I had a camera guy or anything like that. And I had no camera equipment, didn't have anything at all. I just literally had an iPad. And no, sorry, I had a GoPro and an iPad I was going to film it with, right? So we set the GoPro up. There's a thing called putting penalties. I told you a bit about it earlier. Yeah. Sabutio goal, five penalty spots, bang. Ian Wright was lovely. He's like, I'm up for doing it. I'm about to play. We've got to do it quick. Is that all right? I was like, yeah, no problem. Do the whole thing. Uh, GoPro's rolling. It's pissing, pissing oh, rain. Like, torrential oh. rain, right? The guy's sitting there. He's not a, not a camera guy, just someone who's willing to film that for me. I'm hold thinking, it. if you just get a little bit, I'll cut between <laughs> that and the GoPro. That and the GoPro. Exactly. Literally, the GoPro <laughs> comes out. I did really well. It went to like a sudden death playoff. Right, he was into it. Spoony came over, got involved. Love All it. this oh, banter. Oh. I go over and I'm like, that was amazing. He's like, on the first thing, I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to see this back. I go on the file. Instead of a video, there's one image. He just took no. photo, oh, no. not video. Oh, no. Not video. So I've got a clip. That's your, thumb, that's your thumbnail, sort of. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden, the guy, the guy from the agency who knew Wrighty went, oh, Wrighty, I'm so sorry, I didn't film it. Can we do it again? Wrighty went, no. Nah, man, come on, I've got to go. And I was like, Wrighty, you go, mate. And I looked at this guy and I was like, you've absolutely did killed you, me. Did you rinse him? so fuming. Did you rinse him? Um, no, I, I didn't because he was doing me a favour. Yeah. yeah um, but at the same time, I had the GoPro footage, but the GoPro footage is like focused on the Sabutio goal. So, yeah, one day, righty, me and you, the rematch, we're going to film it properly. But it was just so... The worst thing about it was because it's the only reason I was there, but because it, it went so well, like the drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah so, yeah. That's worse. So, I, 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 had a, I had a thing with Juan Mata once, quite early on, to get into do stuff with footballers. I hadn't done much with Juan Mata, lovely guy, yeah? Lovely guy. Everybody oh, yeah. says yeah, he's a lovely he's guy, really yeah. really good. And we had this connection, because I've got this link to this club in Spain called Real Oviedo, where he played. So, yeah. Real Oviedo produced him... Um, Cazorla, Michu all came out of their academy and I'd done a lot of Michu. stuff Michu, Michu yeah. as in Swansea Michu yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Fuh, a, f- a fancy yeah, Premier yeah. League legend yeah <laughs> like one season wonder one hell one out position season, midfield though, playing at the time, oh, the time that I got involved with Oviedo Michu was very at the time like it was that season yeah, yeah. it was like they were the three oh. you know what I mean now you probably say Cazorla and Mata and, and Michu but you know what I mean that that was a big three that produced and um, I was filming with him and uh, we were ch- I was just playing FIFA with him but asking questions and stuff and I had had early access to FIFA that year and it was the first year that Real Oviedo were back in FIFA because they'd been in the lower leagues and they were climbing their way back into the second flight of Spain so I'd gone in the game early first time Oviedo kits had been in the game in like 10 years or yeah, something probably, yeah. and I'd transferred Michu Cazorla and Mata to the team and I screenshotted a picture of them celebrating a goal together and I just thought I wonder if Juan Mata will like this because I know they're really connected to that club and I showed it to him and this is all on the video I showed it to him I was like what do you think of this this uh this picture, he was like, How do you get that? And I was like, Told him the story. He's like, This is so cool, send it to me, I'll make it my screensaver. I was like, This is me, I'm getting great stuff out here. And I realized I hadn't turned the mic on the camera. Oh. <laughs> I was doing it all myself. And that was the last time I said, I'm never going to do something with a third party again where I haven't got someone else to film yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I just lost it all. It's all just... But these, like, when you're working with tech, I mean, we came into the studio today and there was like, before we started, there was like a bit of a panic on about the sound. Well, and stuff, to be fair, we have spent five hours on the golf course. I guarantee you, know I mean? you, every <laughs> slick production you think, like yeah. including yeah, Rogue yeah, and everything, yeah. will something. have so many yeah. things going behind Horror that you never imagine because they won't let you see that. They would yeah. just cut it out, right? Or yeah, let you never sure. know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's, I, it's, I it's think normal. there's no it one that would happen. Normal. I think we're doing all right, you know. Yeah, you've, only, you've had so. a YouTube channel for what, less than a year? Nine months. Yeah, way ahead of the game, mate. It's nice, isn't it? Way ahead yeah. of the game. So, so True Geordie started filming all of his videos for the first few years on a iPhone on an ironing board. Wow. Did yeah. And he grew to a pretty decent-sized yeah. channel. There's a guy called Zach Radford who still to this day is a, is a sort of good YouTube creator from America. He's a great golfer. He films everything and edits everything oh, on his phone. On his no. phone. On his phone. He does two videos a week. Edits on his phone. Imagine editing golf. On your phone, multiple angles, shot tracers. He like he's like doing this, like fingers. Uh, yeah, production quality is what you're up when you've got the format sorted. You know, you do, 
you can be successful on YouTube with, with a phone. You don't. Have, it's not yeah. essential. You don't want to push it too yeah. far, do you? Because like we look at what Fozzie does with his match day vlogs and stuff. If he starts getting a crew following, him, it's yeah. not natural. No, you, you can't. can't. It you literally it's, can't. It's a you can't have that. Thing. Per- I think that's. I think that's a really nice message to say to people. Actually, is you don't have to have all the gear, do no. you? You haven't got to have all the no. equipment. No, as long as you've got decent content and you're personable and you can have a connection with the people watching you, that's all that matters. That's all that people really care about. Isn't it? It's all like I say. It's really good once you get into it and people really start to enjoy the content and then you can start upping all that little bits and bobs and stuff like that. But at the, that moment in time, start with your phone. Start yeah. with yeah. a GoPro. Like I, I literally use my GoPro. That's all I use. It's yeah. on like you know, a little want stubby people, handle and that's it. There isn't, it's not, you haven't got to have thousands of pounds to be successful YouTuber. Yeah. Like you just got to have an idea. And this is one of the most frequently quest, asked questions we get on what the channel. Yeah. What do you use? What I guess it's like what six equipment? grand set yeah. and it's like, no, we use a, Go, a GoPro you know, a medium hero mod. nine and a medium, medium mod. mod. That's, that's it. Yeah. it. And yeah. yeah, yes, it's a lot of money. It's just you know, it's like three hundred quid, but that's it. And actually, you can just get a little microphone for your for your phone. phone and we've had you one. Go. We've had one game where um, we it was. I can't remember the game. I think it was Rotherham actually. Second half, it nailed it down. And the medium mods that you put on GoPros aren't waterproof, so it, it nailed it down. And the audio from the whole of the second half was just gone, sort of mm-hmm. thing. So I've had to almost like talk people for it. It's weird, but again. The content's decent. Yeah, the, yeah, video, yeah. the footage is actually decent. The the audio's gone, but yeah. it's fine. So you don't have to have all singing, all dancing. Just be nice and personal. Yeah. That's simple, it. simple yeah. as that. It helps if you, you, know, you play in a decent football team in Championship or Premier League. Yeah, it does that to me. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the thing about Sean. Sure. Obviously, everyone's got a... A, a, a thing that's their, their catalyst yeah. that makes their content interesting and then you can do lo- loads of other stuff that you do as well and I think that that's also really important Like, because I get I, I'm sure you will as well but like, I get asked that question more than anything else especially by younger lads or, or girls that come up to me who maybe like anything from like 16 to like 22 they're like, I want to be YouTube everyone wants to be YouTube yeah now. for sure yeah and it's like what do, what do you do and I have to be really honest with them and I say it's not I don't know because I did it in a very different world to you Yeah, I did it when when I, got, I, gambled, I, I gambled a lot of time on YouTube, yeah, yeah, yeah. but there was no promise of an end result. There was yeah, no yeah. promise of money. There no was no case study money. of anyone making money no. on YouTube at that point. So I was like wasting, it? I was being told by my mates I was wasting my time. Like, whereas now, if someone's working hard at YouTube with no views, no one's going to say you're wasting your time because you can't make money on YouTube. Yeah. They might say you're not making good enough videos or you're not going to make it, but there was nothing to make. So I can't put myself in their shoes. And we're all very fortunate. We have different reasons. Like I, I had... I worked for football, I worked for Vincent Company, I worked at Copper 90, I had all these roots into the industry, and then I had some good video ideas, and then other YouTubers worked with us. Do you know what I mean? All these things. It's not just, here's an idea. Sailing, it was it sailing, was it, Spen? Like, and it's not lucky, It wasn't plain sailing. Luck, you know? like, for, for, for as many good content series you've had, I'm sure you've had a couple of busts along the way, yeah, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I sure. think, I think uh, to the once you get to the point where you've got like some sort of critical mass of people that you're fans, if you like, or subscribers, or whatever you want to call them, you can get away with the odd rubbish yeah, idea yeah, or yeah, something yeah, you don't yeah. finish or something like that because they, they buy into you and that's a big thing about that's why YouTube worries me a little bit the way it's going because it's like you're losing that YouTube in its early day was like MySpace you had a channel that was like a MySpace profile you're like hi I'm Spencer I'm this old I make these videos like do you want to subscribe and then it slowly got more corporate to yeah, the point sure. where well, we can still do what we do but you've got the James Corden show on the trending page and they've paid for it Jimmy Fallon he's yeah, paid for it yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. trending because people love watching them on YouTube that's not traditional YouTube anymore no, it's is not. It? no 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 and I think the like the like what you were talking about there the USA I think the USA YouTube compared to the UK YouTube are a million miles apart and I know which one I'd rather be in as well I'd much rather be in the UK yes. which I think we do produce but, some of the better stuff the better content the American stuff is is very sort it's of shiny and yeah, commercial. Yeah. Well, even that some of the stuff they got up to, like wow, we but like just, oh my gosh, outrageous! What, you have to have a, you have to have a route in. Like it's not I can't just say to a kid, oh get a really good idea and you will make it because it's not mm. a meritocracy. Yeah. Ultimately, the best videos don't get the most views necessarily. Good videos will do well sometimes, but there's some great videos on ten views and yeah. there's some awful videos on ten yeah, million. Sure, a great yeah. example yeah. of that is there was a many years ago there was a company who I think I don't actually haven't checked in a few years but it was called Unscripted and they acquired the rights for Ronaldo to film vlogs for their channel. Wow. This is before he did any other content online. This is probably over five years ago. And they had vlogs that I found by pure chance that had like 400 views, been up a week. There was Ronaldo playing football with his son in, the, in his garden. 
Like you put that up now, millions of views, right? And that oh, is a prime millions, example. Millions, millions. And I often say to people who say, oh, like, how do you get views? Like, it's not about, like you could have right now, you could drive down a road and there could be to the right-hand side yeah. on the floor, this week's winning lottery ticket. If you don't know it's there, you don't I just know. stop the car and go and get it. Right? Do you know what I mean? There has yeah, to be yeah. a route to that content. Yeah. So this company has spent an inordinate amount of money procuring those rights, but they had no way of delivering it to people. They just thought, but it's Ronaldo, I'll put it on YouTube. But how do people just know it's there? It's not going to just happen. It's yeah, a brand sure. new no, YouTube no, channel. No, but so eventually they developed, like they developed a strategy. On YouTube, yeah. that was your strategy. That Everything really I've done has come from collaboration. You know, like the Wembley Cup. Before that, it was a thing on, called FIFA Player on Copper Night. I don't know if you guys yeah, have to do research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comedy, I've been watching it. It's one of the oldest player. videos, lads. Yeah. The FIFA Player, it was very fun to do. And it was like a comedy series. But actually, if you strip it back, and it takes a little bit of the fun out of it. But it was a, a series that I created with a few other people at Copper 90 designed to get us subscribers that's actually what it was yeah yeah and i basically put on that mask because no one else wanted to do it yeah and i ended up loving doing it but the point was my job i was paid by them to get subscribers to that channel i wasn't paid as a presenter i was always saying put me on a show make me present a show but really they hired me as a guy who knew youtube and i said right you've got to get a certain amount of subscribers because that was a google originals channel so copper were given millions of pounds yeah funded by google and then they if they wanted to get more money in commission they had to keep hitting certain subscriber targets yeah, targets, yeah. so like it was a lot of other people there above me as well, but my really key role was making sure we're hitting our targets and making those targets and what's realistic. So I was like, we need, we need, we're paying certain YouTubers to work with us, KSI, all these people are doing series, but we needed our own series that was going to live on its own sort of, not going to cost silly money to make, but would get us said daddy subscribers through. So I was like, okay, reverse engineer it. FIFA, which a football channel, sure. It's almost like a necessary evil. We've got to do stuff with FIFA, even though not we didn't necessarily want to make it at the time, that content, because it just does unbelievable views. Okay, so we need to do some FIFA. How are we going to get views in it? Right, it's got to have a unique idea. Okay, well, I've seen this guy called Man vs. Booze who does drinking challenges in a, in a balaclava. <laughs> Let's nick that idea. Uh, we also need to have YouTubers on there to basically tell people where the video is because that's the most important bit, like Seb says. They have to push people to it because they won't know it exists. Okay, here's 10 YouTubers I've written up. I've got all their contact details. I've spoke to their agents. If they've got agents, they'll be in a series with us. And then we come up with the character. This is like this is the keys to the kingdom, man. Mate, I'm, this I'm, is the keys honestly, to the kingdom. I'm, I'm, I was getting lost in yeah. that. Yeah. Is, people <laughs> would think I had this idea for a funny comedy character yeah, and, and I, I created this bang, idea yeah. of a guy. And, no, it, that was all later. We did pilots of that called the FIFA Gimp where I wore a gimp suit <laughs> and I went around. All, all I had was the eyes cut out of my gimp suit and I was going like, hey, I'm the FIFA Gimp. That was my voice. <laughs> the worst thing you've ever seen. If I find it, I'll send you at least so bad. I'm the FIFA And it never would have done well. But we, the point is... We had the whole show written, if you like, or planned. But, but also, and it, it changed the character last minute the, to be something But then different. at the same point, like, then I can say this because the all the ingredients were there. You had to then have the the, the format to keep people, make them share yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can pay someone to, like, get a big star in your video that's going to help you tighten the thumbnail, get some organic reach. But then if they are sort of engaged to, can you also shout out this piece of content, call to action, link in the description, that's going to send an amount of traffic. But that traffic's going to be a much lower engaged amount of traffic that you might get from a homepage. Someone on a homepage is clicking a video because they've seen something they're interested in, they might give it longer to dwell on. All this dwell time you're feeding into an algorithm is gonna help or put boost your organic reach or how many times that video and that thumbnail is gonna get pushed to other people that are not your subscribers, right? But if they are told to do something by someone else, there might be a little bit, oh, I'll have a look. If, if KSI has told me to have a look, I'll have a look. So they have a look, JJ's in it, what is this then? But then you've got to have the hook still. It's not as simple as yeah. get a load of YouTubers in yeah, it yeah, yeah, and pay yeah. them and to that promote the video. Because well. they'll just turn off it. And then what you have is the absolute opposite, which actually is a complete negative, is you have a really short watch time. So if yeah, you now have, do you know how yeah, a yeah, huge yeah, yeah, amount yeah. of people watch a video, but all turn off after three seconds, YouTube go, we're not saying that to anyone organically because no one's staying for it. Yeah, yeah. So if you then have everything, a high uh, traffic spike, and retention, you boom, nailed it. Yeah, yeah. boom. Yeah, um, so it's a good idea yeah. and distribution as a strategy. And, but also Dang. you've got to always adapt because I wouldn't know how to do that as well now because back then there was different different methodologies that don't exist anymore. So for example, we'd pay a YouTuber to like a video because back then if you liked a video, it would see. go to your subscriber feed yeah. just like you uploaded yeah. a video. The same algorithmic properties. Yeah, yeah. So for example, KSI liking a video was worth 300,000 views. Really? Like that. Likewise, subscriber movement was so much more prevalent back then. Like, I remember we did a West Ham vlog. Bear in mind, I've never been like guy that gets like millions of views in every video. Like, generally, I'd probably get three, four, five hundred thousand views in, in the sort of prime yeah. FIFA stuff I was doing back in the day. And then I had things like the Wembley Cup that would get more. We did one West Ham vlog, which was like low hanging fruit. They get a couple hundred k views at most. Me going to West Ham, very sort of centric to what I do. 
and I shouted out Saunders's YouTube channel, and he got put on like seventy k subs in an hour or something. I, it would not happen now. I've got more subscribers now than I did then. But if I shouted out a channel now, it would be nowhere near as many. It's yeah, yeah, the yeah. algorithm changed, changed basically. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's the attention economy. This is if you, this is I could get off tangent here, but the rise of these platforms has become because of development of things like this, right? So what's happened is in a given time, ten years ago, you and I would have a ha certain type of amount of habits. There's a certain amount of content we could be exposed to, whether that's reading a book, watching TV, going to the room movies, reading a magazine, right? Now with the invention of this, there's so many more times in our day we can spend consuming content. So all of a sudden now, the, the amount of stuff we can consume is bigger. So the apps like Instagram and YouTube have filled that time because now we can watch something on the bus that we couldn't otherwise watch. So now there's an amount of content that can fill a demand, right? So all of a sudden, people come up on YouTube, they're filling that demand. There's a load of people that want to watch stuff on the bus, and now there's, there's a certain amount they can watch. So everyone watches everything. Then these, these go through like an evolution. And now there's all these creators getting in on that. And now I believe we've reached a bit of a, yeah, a, le a leveling out yeah, of the economy. Whereas we can't that. get any more time now. We can watch it on our phone, watch it on our AirPods, watch it on our phone, our, our laptop, our, our iPads, everything. And now there's so much content. There's only so many eyes in the world, yeah. right? So population will increase. And of course, the amount of... Uh, there'll be an ageism of the population. So people that are an older demographic will start spending time. Like our parents now watch things on their phone. They might have done that three years ago. Yeah. So there's an always going to be a little bit of an up curve, but I believe the growth of the volume of content has now outstripped the growth at which people are spending more time on their phones. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it will continue to do it. So now you've got like the opposite and now it's amazing. I've, got, I've done some business conferences over the years and look about how people will actually look at a movie, Game of Thrones producers will look at their main competition as things like Fortnite. Because what are these people spending their time doing? They're playing their Xbox, playing Fortnite. So they're competing with Fortnite. They're not competing with Lord of the Rings anymore. No, 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 that's it's, I it's, think it's, it's Premier League or something. So something uh, Scudamore, someone that was in, back in the day a few years ago was in charge of the Premier League, came out and said, we think one of our biggest competitors is things like Fortnite. Wow. Uh, not Syria. What is the youth you know, of the day spending their time consuming it, yeah. and building relationships? YouTube boxing. Hmm. What, what are you coming off the back of there? The um, no, we're just like it's, yeah, okay. It's so big, isn't it's it? YouTube boxing. Boxing. Yes we, or no? We YouTube boxing was that started. Theo, Theo Baker, Baker doesn't get the credit it. he deserves. He started no, no, that. Really. Happened, I think it's Theo versus Joe Weller was the first ever. YouTube and then and in that match. fight, Joe Weller won. He called out KSI. KSI fought Joe Weller. Called out Logan Paul and Jake Paul. And now you've got Logan Paul fighting Floyd Mayweather. Mm. And I'm playing the winner apparently. You, is Mayweather about your height? I mean, he's probably a little bit bigger than I don't know if he is. I don't know if he is. I think that would be a fair fight, though. <laughs> yeah, really? Tell you what, we'll do a two, two reg golf. affair. We'll do boxing, boxing versus golf. Yeah, Every amount of shots I've beaten by is about a three punches. Yeah, handicap. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still don't yeah. think you're going to you win, mate. I'm probably not going to win. I'll punch him 30 times and he'll flick me once and it'll be game over. Spencer, who are you fighting? Uh, I have been asked to do that before. Um, <laughs> you have, but honestly. Yeah. And I would love actually the training element of it. I like uh, less so. Since you just don't want to get hit in the face. No, it? it would be. I agree. No, totally. No, he, he, the dedication he's got to put on the face. He's done boxing before. I, I've actually got no problem being hit in the face. Yeah. Um, my problem is probably more. I, I, I don't. I wouldn't feel like. I'm not. Like, I'm, it's not. I, I rate them doing yeah. it like yeah, fair play yeah, to them yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I would be feel like it's like it's not I guess I've scene. done it with football a little bit like I've sort of cheated into being playing football games when I'm not good enough but with boxing I don't think you should mess about with no, it let's be honest get, right what no, that's become now is a phenomenal cash cow for those guys yeah. like they have developed the marketing strategy now Jake Paul has got himself and I think the top five earning boxers in the world because he's a professional boxer fair because play that, like, fair play right yeah. done fantastically well but that's the goal and like you're not motivated like that. No, there, there was a time when I thought about it. I thought the only way I could do it is if I really actually wanted to fight a person. Yeah, yeah sure. But then, even then, I'd probably just as rather do it in an alleyway with no cameras yes. than I would in a boxing ring. Yeah. And yes. there's probably only ever been one person that I'd even consider doing that. I, I'm not really so. I don't really carry that much beef. Like, it's just not a big deal for We're me. We're getting old. We don't need it yeah. anymore, do we? We just want to have and a nice fake time. Parents the beef's fake anyway. They're all parents. The beef's fake, anyway. fake anyway, right? They're not actually... Yeah. Like, it's in yeah, pro yeah, boxing, yeah. it's the same. Yeah. It's just all marketing. So, not for me. I like the training element of it. I'd like to try... One time I went into a series where I tried those different sports because my missus's brother used to be in the UFC. So, I was going to try a bit of... MMA and all different kinds of things. And I like that side of it, but I actually I don't really want to fight anyone. I think no. there's an element of selling your soul a little bit as well, isn't there? It's dangerous. You know, say you've got kids and stuff. Yeah, 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 one punch, yeah. yeah, yeah, trouble. No, sod that for a game. Right, guys, honestly, today has been an absolute pleasure. All the best in the Ismian League next Thank season. You. I had to research how to say Ismian early because it's spelt so funny and it's horrible. It is. What is next for hashtag? 
Yeah, I mean, that's the main attention for me is just growing the club. Um, one of the reasons we talked earlier about how we don't necessarily spend all our money on playing staff. The reason for that is really we want to save money to to have a ground, you know, Boom. have our permanent home. That's what's going to allow the, kick, uh, the club to kick on, you know, have our own bar, ground share, you don't get bar, food money and anything like that. So getting that to grow the club sustainably. Get yeah, everyone in one place as well, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, bring all the club together in one. Match site. Dave Logs at hashtag. Match Dave oh, Logs. Yeah. You always as many always GoPros watch. as you want. I ain't even joking. Couple GoPros years everywhere. time, I'm doing Match Dave Logs from hashtag. We could right? play you in the FA Cup this year. We could play you imagine. in the FA Cup this year. Oh my God, imagine you that. Imagine that. Seba, the you're scenes. coming for Rick Shields like soon. <laughs> Rick Shields, you don't know what's going to hit you soon, all right? He's coming after you, all right? <laughs> oh yeah, well, well, me and Mick are good pals. I haven't actually filmed with him in a little time, in a long while now, but um, he is killing what he's doing. Yeah, he's, yeah, good. he's, he's very, very good. Fans. Very good. So yeah, I've just be great to get out and play a bit more golf like we did today, wouldn't you it? You taught me how to uh, hit that driver. You were saying today. to first tee, you were like, what did Rick say? What would what Rick, Rick say? Rick <laughs> Just a little bit to be fair, Matt, you did bang it though. You close. absolutely know, banged that first shot. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching that. That was an absolute pleasure. Guys, thank Spencer, you. Sebastian, thank Thanks you so course. much for coming today. Really appreciate it. You have broken our virginity today. The very, very first wow. Fozcast. Thank you so much. Thanks Tomasi, for give me that. Brilliant. Cheers, Good job, lads. Thank the editor. Wicked. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers.